What's up YouTube? Welcome to another exciting personal finance video. Guys, if you guys are into things like gold and silver, uh, personal finance, uh, building wealth, all that good stuff, please like the video, subscribe to my channel, and check out my website, My Road to Wealth and Freedom. I'll put the link in the description down below. Uh, quick disclaimer guys, I'm not a financial advisor. The channel's for entertainment only, so please do your own research before um, buying things like gold and silver, following any of the investment strategies that I mentioned in these videos or, you know, any of the stocks that I talk about or, or whatever, do your own research, check with a financial advisor before making any financial decisions. Okay, guys. Wow. Pretty crazy week. Uh, gold and silver are on the move again, especially gold. We broke, we blew through 1800. I think it was on Wednesday or Thursday. I can't remember which day. Um, yeah, it was also a crazy week kind of for the markets. They were a little bit up and down there. They seemed like a bit skittish. So, um, just let me kind of, uh, lay out the week as best I can remember now. I think like the, the main thing that we saw this week was Janet Yellen coming out. I, I believe it was Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday. I can't remember now. And she basically said, um, they might have to raise, the Fed might have to raise interest rates to cool an overheating economy. And of course that sent markets into a tailspin because, uh, all these asset prices are just, you know, puffed up on cheap money and available credit. The second you talk about tightening, bang, everything kind of, kind of comes down. Uh, so the very next day she quickly, or, or even that afternoon, actually, she walked back that statement, uh, said, no, they're just still not thinking about raising interest rates, but she just threw that out there and this and that. This just goes to show you how sensitive the markets are, how, um, how dangerous of times we live in. If you're an investor in stocks or any other kind of inflated asset like crypto or, or even real estate, you know, the fact that nobody can even mention raising interest rates from the record lows that they are today. Um, it just, I, how, how are we ever going to get out of this situation? You know, the, the, the two ways that we get out is we get crazy like inflation or they raise rates and, and, and values of things like stocks and real estate, uh, you know, they come back to, they revert to the mean, basically. They come back to more normal valuations. Um, so anyways, everything that I saw this week should scare the crap out of everybody out there. But no one really cares. Uh, as soon as uh, uh, she walked back the comments, uh, the market started to climb again the next day. Everything was all good. We got uh, uh, some payroll reports. They were horrible uh, in Canada. We lost several hundred thousand jobs uh, in the U.S. They were expecting a, a, a job gain of one million. They got two hundred sixty-six thousand, which is really not that great at all, and it doesn't really bode well for the so-called recovery, uh, recovery, the reopening trade. Everyone's going to get their job back. Everybody's sitting around with all this money, pent up demand and spending and stuff like that. Um, Again, I've been saying for a while, I, I just don't really, I don't see it. I don't buy it. Um, you know, if you've, if you've been broke and couldn't pay your mortgage for the past year or you're a tenant and you couldn't pay rent, uh, now you're at risk of being evicted if you're in the U.S. Um, there's all sorts of things that are happening. There's all sorts of, um, I feel like a lot of the damage done particularly in things like commercial real estate and that it's all been kind of hidden swept under the table banks it, it didn't show up on bank earnings or anything like that everything's kind of like um i don't know if it's like being hidden or, or whatever but it's just not being reported on at the very least um and that's kind of masking like the true nature of, of, of what kind of recovery we're seeing um i think people think like we're gonna see this crazy you know great economy I, I just don't buy it. I think there's a lot of damage done. And and what I saw this week tells me the same thing. People are still struggling with these like two opposite views of where we're headed, either the inflation or deflation. And we saw that all over the news this week. Um, 
I saw billionaire Sam Zell for the first time in his career. He was saying he went out and bought some gold because he's worried about inflation. Warren Buffett just over the weekend at the Berkshire Hathaway annual meeting was, you know, going off about, yeah, we're seeing inflation. So I guess the main thing is, is what, what, what kind of inflation are we actually seeing? We know supply chains have been disrupted. Um, it's taken a while for supply chains to, to be restored. Um, you know, is, is this kind of supply chain inflation where it's just, you know, a lot of money chasing a few goods, but, you know, over time, the supply chains will be on the mend and we're not going to have these backlogs and, you know, the supply demand imbalance will, will return to normal. That is, I think, what the Fed is trying to say when they talk about inflation as a, a, tran a transitory phenomenon. Um and that's what they've said. You know, we believe the inflation that we're seeing, they've been warning, you know, these next few months, we're going to see a bit of inflation, you know, might shoot past their 2% target, but that's all good because it's just transitory. It's not here to stay. It's kind of supply chain issues. Once that gets ironed out, hey, we'll be back to like, you know, uh, fighting off uh, deflationary trends. Maybe that's the case. I'm not sure. The, the flip side of that is, you know, inflation you do get like the supply, like supply uh, shocks can obviously cause inflation impacts, um, you know, the supply goods to meet existing demand. Um, I think though, there's another kind of component. It's like the psychological part of the inflation. If people expect prices to go up, they're going to raise prices. And we're hearing all sorts of things, especially in the building world. You know, if you're a contractor, um, it's, you're probably quoting labor plus costs. You're not plus like material costs. You're not giving a, a firm, a, a firm cost of, you know, materials, you know, if two by fours were two bucks a, a board or whatever, you know, you could easily do that. But now, you know, they've been all over the place. Now I, I, I hear they're as high as $10 us. Um, that's crazy. Hard to believe, but you know, if, if that's the kind of inflation we're talking about, that can sort of be a bit hard to put back in the bag. On the housing front this week, uh, in Toronto, Canada's hottest, one of Canada's hottest markets in all the GTA, actually, um, prices have dipped a little bit. I, I don't think it was significant, maybe, you know, 2% or something like that. And um, sales have actually kind of gone down. Realtors are saying, you know, they're not getting huge bidding wars on houses that just, you know, maybe even a month or two ago would have crazy busy bidding wars. Have people finally woken up to the fact that hey, I might actually have to like pay off this like crazy mortgage. And when I'm just like acting like I'm at some Vegas casino with these high flying bids, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars over asking, um, does that is, is that really a wise choice at this point? So I think people are so like, it's that kind of reality starting to hit people. Um, things cost money in the real world, you have to repay these loans. Do you really want to be saddled with, you know, uh, set, like, you know, three quarter of a million dollar mortgage, a million dollar mortgage? Um, I'm not so sure. I think people are starting to wake up or, or at the very least, we've pushed things to the, to their limits. Um, there's only so much, you know, you can inflate these bubbles until, you know, the wheels start to come off. Now, Canada's real estate market never did correct. It's been on a tear for, you know, over 20 years. Um, I understand Australia is in a similar boat. boat. They've been on a tear for like over 30 years down there. Um, so there's still, you know, we, we haven't really faced that reckoning. So where does this all lead us? Um, well, at the end of the day, uh, just like you keep saying, I'm still on the fence. I don't know where this is going. Uh, I'm trying to protect myself with gold and silver. Um, last week, I mentioned I bought Equinox Gold. I'm up about 10% on that in the run of a week. I mean, that's not too bad. Um, oil, I saw yesterday my oil stocks took a dip initially, then they shot back up because, you know, the market initially um, sold off on the bad jobs report. But then it realized, whoa, 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 wait, in normal times, we would sell off. We're still in this bad news is good news and good news is good news. So we're just going to rally. That means the Fed won't tighten. That means, you know, QE will continue. 
um, you know, uh, the Fed will be in like kind of a more dovish, uh, dovish posture going forward. So of course that led asset prices to continue to rise. Um, but this week we we had the Fed. We had a whole bunch of people come out and, and you know warn about crypto, uh, warn about asset valuations. Um, you know people need to proceed with caution and be careful. They're doing all they can to kind of talk talk the markets down. Um, again, I just don't see there's not going to be an orderly drawdown whatsoever. You have like the biggest speculative bubble uh, this century, if not in the past hundred some years you've got main street they're all in on these crazy stocks and cryptos uh wall street they're all there's just a raging mania and and again like we've been discussing this i just think again this is not going to end very well people are probably thinking they're going to be able to see the warning signs and get out um History shows us and tells us time and time again that that's never the case. Um, you know, if things go down, we're in that buy the dip mentality. If it continues to go down, then you're kind of wrestling with, oh man, I, I just got to get back to even. It's that whole gambler mentality. And it's only after you've lost a significant portion and panic and then just sell to get out at any price that that you realize, hey, you know, I'm I'm done. I'm toast. So... You know, and that's what happens. You know, the Fed, uh, Bank of Canada, all these Western governments they, and central banks, they've flooded their economies um, with uh, cheap, easy money. They've given away tons of money. Um, and it, it all went into inflated asset prices. Um, I, I just don't think that's going to end very well. I keep saying it. I've been warning. Um, even, uh, you know, even on my uh, my financial blog, my Road to Wealth and Freedom, I've been doing these net worth reports and, and my passive income reports. My passive income has taken a huge hit. I've sold a lot of positions and I, I keep saying this, I'm playing it safe. At, at With asset prices at these levels, I, I don't think there's a whole lot left to go before we hit a top. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I remember in... 2009 i was buying the s p 500 when it was at 700 today it's like 40 almost 4300 uh e even just in the past year you know uh if you just go back to like uh you know the end of february last year of 2020 um you know they've markets have ran well past that peak um i just think there's a lot of frothiness in the market uh, inflation can sink this ship, uh, interest rate hikes can sink it, or it can just kind of collapse under its own weight. Um, I think these threats are really real. And, uh, you know, I, I, I try to warn people. I try to like, you know, I have friends in that who are like, oh yeah, I just made 10, 10 X my money on Ethereum and, and this. And I'm just like, dude, like sell some, take, take a little bit off the table. If you put in a thousand bucks and you're sitting on a $10,000 gain, Take a thousand or two, you know, take your principal out, maybe take another thousand on top, double your money and then play with the, uh, leave the other eight in. Like we're in this weird reality where, you know, people are sitting on these massive paper gains and it's all an illusion tomorrow. You know, it just takes one bad thing and bang, it's all gone. And, you know, People keep looking, you know, I think that's part of the problem too with markets and that they're like looking, oh, what what could end the party? You know, what what are the risks out there? And let's try to like identify every single possible thing that can go wrong and and try to figure it out to, to get ahead. And, and again, like it, that's kind of like a fool's errand. Um, you know, we can't predict the future. In the past, you know, corrections have started. It might just be some people just want to take a little bit of money off the table and then that that starts the downward spiral. It starts to go down and panics more people who are up. It's like, hey man, I, I got all these gains. You know, I, I don't want to. I don't want to see them like evaporate. So go up and smoke. I'm going to start selling too, and then the next guy sells, and then the next guy sells. The scary thing about this and how quickly things can unwind is um, the amount of leverage in the system right now. We're at record highs, record all time uh, debt and leverage in these markets. 
um, which is super dangerous. Um, yeah, anyway, so I'm not going to go on any more about that stuff, guys. The deflation inflation thing is still is still still going. Uh, you know, Buffett and uh, I see Sam Zell. Um, those guys have sent clear warning shots, you know, that inflation is becoming a problem. I think Janet Yellen's starting to pick up on it. Um, the big question is, um, and again, like, you know, we are seeing commodity inflation, you know, commodity prices are soaring, you know, oil, copper, uh, all kinds of um, like timber and that, you know, back in the crash of 08, 09, one of the, one of the reasons given for you know um, what caused the collapse. Yes, everybody knows about the housing bubble, but a lot of guys argued at the time that it wasn't just simply the housing bubble. It was the price of commodities. We were in a bull market. Price of oil hit almost 150 bucks a barrel in I think 2007, 2008, early 2008. Can't really remember when. Um, they were saying like that was basically you know collapsing the economy. So here we are in this nascent, fragile recovery. Um, we still have high unemployment. In Canada, we're, I think, around 8%, 8.1%, 8 8 which is pretty big. Uh, in the U.S., I think it's it, it's better. I think it's almost around 6, 5.5, 6, somewhere around there. Um, you know, commodity prices going up, you know, um, it's taking more money out of people's pockets. You know, we got food inflation. You know, where's this recovery really going to come from? So I'm not so sure. I don't, I just, and I've said it before, guys. I don't believe that people are just sitting with all this money on the sideline waiting to start spending again. I think if you wanted to buy something, I mean, I got kids. Uh, if you have kids, you know, did you do Christmas this year? Did you do uh, Easter? You know, did you uh, do birthdays and stuff like that? Like what pent up demand is there really? You know, people have been buying um, they've been renovating their homes. Uh, they've been buying cars. They've been buying appliances. They've been buying everything under the sun, computers. There's a shortage of everything now uh, because of that. You know, these supply chain shocks and and uh, chip shortages and all that, it's going to get sorted out. Um, the question is, is that, is it really going to be, is the inflation transitory or is it, you know, some sort of structural thing going on in which case we could see a repeat of the 1970s? Um, Again, so I'm still, I'm still holding, uh, you know, my gold and oil stocks and stuff like that. But I am starting to kind of think about maybe paring back a little bit, maybe taking a little bit of money off the table with particularly my oil stocks. Um, yeah, like, like I was saying, if you're up, there's no shame in selling. Um, also, it's just, you know, could we get hit with a, a big deflationary scare? You know, all the all the people who have lost their jobs and that, you know, maybe maybe if you worked at a restaurant and hired 10 people, maybe, um, you know, the lockdowns and uh, and all that, you know, taught, you know, that that business how to be more nimble, more resilient, you know. Um, maybe not. I'm not sure. But uh yeah, anyways, it was interesting. You know, gold and silver are, are finally on the rise again. Uh, if you guys have been holding it, um, I mean, I'm not, I don't trade in and out of these things. You know, when you own physical gold, uh, you're holding for the long term, basically. You're not planning on, you know, trading it away. Uh, it's an insurance policy. It's kind of sleep at night. It's something tangible. It's something outside of the banking system. And, uh, you know, as we see more of these hedge funds go bust and, and the losses, you know, from that RK goes, um, you know, Credit Suisse, I, th I forget how many billion they said they were lost. I, th I thought th I thought they said maybe almost 10 billion or something like that. I mean, that's just crazy. And these are all signs. Uh, the Dogecoin there that's up, you know, 25,000% started as a joke. You know, all of, these are all topping signs, topping patterns, you know, signals, bad omens, whatever. Um, un unfortunately, and and I, I mean, I'm not going to lie, guys, I've been kicking myself too. You know, I, I feel like I sold too early. I sold uh, especially some of my bank stocks. Um, you know, I, I'm not perfect. You know, we all we all do what we think is right for our situation. Um, you know, I sold and I left some money on the table and I was like kind of kicking myself for that. But then I thought like, you know what? It's honestly in these type of situations, 
you know, it's better to be, you know, months early than one day too late. As we saw last March, when the markets really go down, when you, people are really, truly terrified and scared, um, you can't get out. You know, I remember, you know, the stock exchanges, they would hit if, if they drop 5% in a certain amount of time, they hit this limit and it shuts down uh, trading for, you know, a half hour or something like that. These, these uh, circuit breakers were going off constantly. Because I remember I was trying to buy into that mess. And I remember thinking at the time, you know, I these poor souls trying to sell out, you know, they, they probably want to get out. They're unable to sell. Things aren't catching bids. Um, you know, they're dropping like rocks. You know, uh, you know, some of some of these bank stocks, I remember, um, I forget which one it opened. It opened one day at 90 bucks. And I put a buy order in at like, I think 70 and it actually got down. Like the market just dropped so fast. Um, it got down there. I remember I was like, why is like, why isn't my order being executed? And everything's going really, really slow. And it's like a slow, you know, stairway down in price until it finally met my, uh, <clears throat> my bid. And, and that's what was going on. That's exactly what was going on, you know? And, and if you're trying to get out, like, Everybody has that mentality. Oh, it won't happen to me. I will be the first one out. And it never happens that way. Things happen fast. Um, you know, if you're trading crypto, I mean, who knows, you know, you go to bed, you know, 10 o'clock at night, overnight, you know, it could, it could, you know, we have these flash crashes, it could crash. And you wake up the next morning, and you know, you had 100 grand in Bitcoin, and all of a sudden, it's five grand. You know, I'm just saying, this is what happens. Um, everybody's in it for the good times. Nobody's really taking money off the table. And that's the main thing. Like, <clears throat> I don't know. It, it, uh, if you're in your late 30s, early 40s, you've kind of seen this before. You know, in the dot-com bubble, I remember talking to people ready to retire. <clears throat> and they had all this money, even, even in the financial crisis. Same deal. So many people had to de delay their retirement or their retirement uh, savings was just wiped out by market crashes. And, you know, what would it have taken to just take a little bit of money off that and diversify into something else? I'm not saying gold and silver. You could buy bonds or you could buy, hold it in cash and do whatever. But people don't do that time and time again. They just never do that. They see a good thing. They got a good thing going. They don't think about the downside risk. Instead, they just think it's going to keep going to the moon. These are all classic behaviors of people and speculators in bubbles. You know, they have no risk management. Um, they're just they're just gambling all the way. So anyway, we'll see what this week uh, will bring. I see the metals are on the move. I think more and more people are waking up. You know, if you got profits in in some crypto. Why not diversify and pick up some gold or silver? Um, if you got profits in the stock market, that's kind of what I was doing last year. I was taking my dividend income, some of my uh, profits from trading, and I was buying gold and silver. Um, you just want to hedge. You want to be diversified. You want to be protected uh, for what's coming. So that's it for today. Guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks so much. Please like uh, the video, subscribe to my channel, check out my website, My Road to Wealth and Freedom. Um, I'm going to be throwing up my uh, passive income report pretty soon. So go on, check that out. If you want to read about, you know, top uh, top silver bullion or gold bullion to buy, I got a couple articles on the website about that. I'll, again, those articles I think are in the link below. So uh, are in, a, in the description before, uh, below. So check that out. If you want to buy gold and silver, um, I use sil silver gold bull, the uh, price match. Um they're pretty good. I've had a good experience with them. Again, links in the description below. Thanks so much for supporting me, guys. I really appreciate it. Have a good weekend.